Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ukulele on the Ground podcast live. My name is Aldrin Guerrero. Joining me are Mr. Aaron, the voice. Nakamura, say what's up, Aaron. What's up? And Mr. Kahai, the legend, Fergan. Say what's up, Kahai. What's up? Uh, we are here, ladies and gentlemen. It's 1 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. That means it's time to chat it up. We're going to be answering any questions that you guys may have about the ukulele, about ukulele on the ground, about us, or just about life in general. Kahai, can we, should we do a... Do the love line and stuff, and just take you know, like give advice to people. We should do that. Like you should do a whole episode where we just have people call in, and you know, and and ask for some advice, and 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 we give them life life advice, right? Kahai? Yeah. Should we do that today? That's kind of what the show is, except it's mostly ukulele and <laughs> <laughs> Nicktoons advice. And Nicktoons. Yeah. <laughs> now uh, we have fun here, so it's u- the Ukula on the Ground podcast. If you're joining us for the first time, thank you so much for giving us a listen. But uh, we like to thank all of you folks who've been joining us weekly, or as much as you can, or listening in in your car. I get some emails saying that yeah, they they listen to this on on the way home, so. You know, listen, don't get distracted, drive carefully, right? Kahai? Mm-hmm. And we don't want people to be like, you know, it's, like, it was whatever, 6 o'clock p.m., going home, this person was listening to this ukulele podcast. And, I, like, <laughs> I hope there's like somebody who's like, you know, maybe listening to the replay and it's yeah. like, it is 6 o'clock and they're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> oh, yeah. how do they know? <laughs> <laughs> Are they watching? <laughs> So uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. We have fun. So that's basically all it is. Um, if you guys have questions, we are live. So you guys can ask your questions via the live chat or uh, send us an email and or send us a text. Um, we, have, we have a voicemail that's set up that you guys can call and stuff. So uh, yeah, let's get started. Kahai, what's the first question of the day? Devin said, how do I meet my soul, Yuke? How do you meet your soul, Yuki? You know, like there are plenty of, of, of Yukes out in the sea. <laughs> no, uh, um, I think it's a myth. It is. It is. You know what I mean? Like you just you just keep going until you find the right one for you. You know what I mean? You're not gonna cast one like <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna yeah. cast just one time and cast the perfect uke. You know, you just gotta keep finding out. You're like, okay, well, I like this from this uke, and I like that from that uke. And then you you grow to know what you like, and then you'll eventually run into the perfect ukulele where you're like, you'll you'll take it for its ups and downs, you know? Like it's not no nobody's perfect, right? Or no uke is perfect. I should say no uke is perfect. Uh-huh. So, you know, you you see it and you're like, okay, cool. Well, I like more stuff than I don't like about this, about this ukulele. And and the stuff that I like about this ukulele outweighs the stuff that I don't like. And it's I don't know, but uh, I haven't found the perfect uke, you know, for for myself. I, I get close to it. Like this is a really close, you know, um, perfect ukulele for me. But I, I mean, I know with you know with, with technology, with uh, with with build um, uh, styles and all that kind of stuff. Like there's just ukuleles, you know, that are being built left and right, and people just advancing, you know, like building ukuleles and whatnot. So, you know, I'm taking this question seriously. I know it was kind of a joke and stuff, but for the most part, I'm super excited. Because, like, just, say, a year ago, two years ago, like, this, like, relief that I have on my ukulele, the true relief, um, was was not, you know, was not a thing on ukuleles. So this, I didn't even know I wanted this, honestly. Like whenever I see like some new kind of gimmick thing that they do on ukuleles, I'm always looking at it with skeptical, you know, skeptical eyes. But this one, I had to really like see it to believe and feel to believe kind of thing. And I did, and I'm like, okay, cool. Now, you know, like my vision of a perfect ukulele has this in it, just no question, you know? So it changes every time, and I'm excited about all the cool changes that are going on with ukulele nowadays. Because if you were to ask me the same question, see, like in high school, like what's you know, like what's your perfect ukulele and whatever, just it would be like, oh, I want like a kamaka this and that. But now there's like so much brands. There's Kanilea. There's you know, there's all these uh, Taylor. Like I have a Taylor ukulele. There's like I don't know, uh, Carla's making some good stuff. Like everyone's making good ukuleles now. So the definition of the perfect ukulele just I don't know, keep, keeps <laughs> keeps getting more and more complicated. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, in the the keyboard community, yeah. there's like the end game keyboard, mm-hmm. and so people talk about like if I just if I spend mm. four thousand dollars on this <laughs> keyboard, that is my end game keyboard, and I will never buy anything mm-hmm. else. Right. And of course, like people buy their so-called endgame keyboard, mm. and then a couple months later, they're like, 
hey guys, I'm trading my keyboard for <laughs> something. Anybody want to trade my keyboard for something else? I mean, I, re I remember back in 02, like I, I'm telling my age, but I graduated high school in um, 2002. And as like a graduation present to myself, I built like like whatever, you know, like the the highest specs of compute, like for a computer or a PC that, that mm -hmm. I could that I could get. I went to this place on you know on, on Kauai called Computer Hospital, and I built myself a nice PC. It was like two grand, dude. Like at the time it was a lot of money for a computer. Mm -hmm. And um and it had the works, like a, a good, you know, like a good or whatever, whatever, whatever you can think of at the time. That, that was a, you know, like Alienware or whatever. That was, that was, <laughs> you know, cool. They they built it for me, and I'm like, man, this is awesome. But like, you know, fast forward to now, 20 years later, like that computer, you couldn't give it away for like, <laughs> you couldn't pay someone to take that computer, you know, and and, and that's the same thing I think with ukuleles, like. Um, there's going to be phenomenal ukuleles that are going to be built and that are going to uh, go up in value or uh, or that are going to be cherished and stuff. But there are definitely going to be some ukuleles that like you know like might not hold its value if you're into that and whatever. But there's also like a sentimental like you know thing to it too. Like um, I have like some not not like the best ukuleles but i think the sentimental value behind it is you know like outweighs it and i think to, for me like it sounds really good although it's not like the most expensive it's not the most fancy and stuff like i got an ukulele from kanilea that um that i think is one of the best sounding like kanilea's ukulele uh, kanilea ukuleles that i have is uh they gave an ukulele to everyone who um who did a track for the ola kaina album and um, I got that ukulele. It's just like a really stripped down uke, and and um, it has uh, like that satin ingredient. finish. Yeah, and, like that's it. It was like a like marry me, like a K one with a satin finish, but just engraved with like the Ola Kaina and the twenty uh, twenty year anniversary. Yeah. You know, Kani uh, Kani. It, it has the name of your track. Yes, on the it. name of the tracks is yeah, so Ali like Kuma Kani. Yeah. Other than that, you know, it's, but it the basis is just like a normal K one satin finish ukulele, but because of the sentimental value like i played it a lot and now it like it sounds incredible you know like i've always been a fan of uh of, of satin or, or silk you know kind of finish ukuleles because they sonically i think they sound really 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 good you know um and yeah it just it just really depends like perfect ukuleles it, it, it exists out there for for everyone but that definition definitely changes every year you know yeah the <laughs> like I, I, for a few like mm -hmm. hobbies, I've seen them referred to as like rabbit holes, right? <laughs> and it's like you get one and then you fall down the rabbit hole mm -hmm. of like, what is better or what can I get or what can I change about my one? So mm -hmm. it's if it, it seems like uh, if you have that personality of like you're going to chase something, mm -hmm. it's like you're always going to be chasing it, right? It's not, you're, there's mm -hmm. almost like no guarantee that you're going to be like, yeah. I reached the pinnacle. I got the one. And this is it. <laughs> no more for me. And then, yeah. you know, next month something comes out. It's like, but that looks pretty good. I might want to check that one out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, aesthetic wise, you know, like there's going to be a lot of differences. Tone wise, going to be a lot of, you know, like a lot of differences and a lot of advancements and all those things. And, and just, you know, uh, features too. Like there's going to be new tuners that are going to be coming out. Like back then it was nothing but friction, you know, like good luck tuning that one to one ratio or whatever, you know? <laughs> oh, now, I still do that. <laughs> <laughs> now there's like, that's, I guess the fluke is my soul. <laughs> <laughs> there's like 16 to one, 18 to one, like ridiculous, um, like gear ratio for, you know, for tuners. And there's going to be different pickups, different strings, you know, it's just, it's crazy. And now like, um, um, I know we talk about Kanilea a lot, and I'm a huge fan and stuff. Like the uh, the newest like platinum that they have with all these like amazing you know like stones that they're putting on top, it just gives me all these ideas. I'm like, oh, I didn't know you could put that stone <laughs> like, in, uh, on a, on an ukulele. So like, I'm I'm taking notes, you know, like and uh, yeah. So I'm I'm stoked. I'm I'm excited for the future. Like as an ukulele player uh, of of the past, like uh, and I got excited. When you know when the say the the on fire album from Kyle Creative Boys came out and uh, and there was like a front and center picture of Troy Fernandez's ukulele and it was one of those like one day you know yeah I'm gonna own one of the one of those and it's just like the coolest ukulele for me back then that was a perfect ukulele I'm like look at that thing yeah. it's so gorgeous you know and then now it's like 
I mean, that's cool. <laughs> you know, that, that ukulele is, is, is good. It's like the uke that recorded that legendary album. But, you know, I'm, I'm sure you can, you can get a better uke than that <laughs> nowadays. But there is a sentimental value, like, like, I, uh, like I said earlier. But it changes. It's going to change. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a great question. That was a joke question, though, but it's a great question. <laughs> well, we have a, an article about, mm -hmm. like, how you came up with the oh, yeah. green model. Yes. Yeah. And oh, not this particular one. Not, like yeah, uh, the older, one. like uh, yeah. cool models that I have. You know, like I, um, I took that like iconic, um, like fat rosette and like and koa. You know, master grade koa and stuff of uh, Troy Fernandez's Sunny D. And then the headstock stuck with you know with the uh, with Jake Shimabukuro. So this Jake Shimabukuro and Troy Fernandez hybrid ukulele that I had. It was cool. It was. I mean, I think. You know, as of as of right now, like one of um, my favorite designs for an ukulele, just just because it's so personal to me. You know, it's not everyone's cup of tea and stuff, but that's definitely something that uh, that I really dig because it meant so much to me. Like two of my uh, of my biggest inspirations as far as ukulele, like it's kind of like you know having like a piece of of their like of their energy like playing with me on stage is kind of cool because i play nothing but Kyle Crater Boys and Pure Heart songs so <laughs> <laughs> yeah to this day <laughs> to this yeah you know i'm uh, i'm i'm pretty uh, i'm pretty easy as far as like jamming wise and stuff if if you ever want to jam with me if you see me anywhere and you want to jam if you like if if you name a Kyle Crater Boys song or a Pure Heart song very, very, very high chances that I'm like, yeah, I'll jam with you. <laughs> Not that I don't and stuff, but for the most part, I'm like, be more stoked, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not that I'm not stoked to jam with people, but it's, it, it definitely lights a fire, you know, in me. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> see, you're a man of culture or a woman of culture. <laughs> so, so when you created that, mm -hmm. the Aldrin model, yes. Kanilea ukulele, mm -hmm. that was basically your soul uke at the time. Yeah. Yeah. That was my soulmate ukulele at the time. Yeah. And, you know, like with, just working with Joe Souza because he's just like, oh, what if we do this? Or what if we do that? Uh -huh. I'm like, well, I didn't even know you could do that, you know? <laughs> but down to like the tuners and stuff, like these Gilbert tuners are the same tuners that like, that Jake uses. Yeah. So it's, you know, I'm not like hiding it or I'm not be like, no, it's I'm not trying to copy Jake. It's like, no, this is straight up like, yeah. you know, inspired by Jake's ukulele and Troy Fernandez's ukulele. So mm -hmm. for this particular one, I didn't go with the fat rosette because I didn't want to cover this beautiful spruce. Like if you guys ever, you know, see this ukulele up close. Um, usually, they uh, they rate the 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 tone quality or the quality of the uh, of the spruce based on like lines per inch. Mm -hmm. And this is just ridiculous. I didn't want to cover any of that stuff, so I went with a smaller rosette. Um, but still, you know, got a little rose, it got a little um, sparkly on this one, you know, yeah. a little fancy schmancy because this one's got abalone um, inlays on it. Whereas like my older ukuleles kept it like nice and, you know, uh, mm -hmm. simple, but, but elegant. That was yeah. what I was going for with the other one. I mean, like, and even like when you have a, mm -hmm. a uke or an instrument and you just keep playing it, right? That in of itself can become like yeah. a, a new, a whole new thing too, right? With like. Uh, it, it's with Willie Nelson, right? And Trigger, right? yeah, his his guitar Trigger, <laughs> yeah. So it's just like even that, it's just you're just kind of adding to it if you play it more. So, would you equate that to like having like a like a childhood friend that you grew up with and stuff, and you play all the time, and you realize, and one day you wake up, you're like, I'm in love with this person, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> and they become like the you know your soulmate, or, you know. <laughs> Or it's like uh like marrying your high school sweetheart, yeah, I right? Guess so yeah, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. it's just like it's been good for fifty years, you know, it's not gonna change. I envy so. those people, you know, like when yeah, they yeah, when yeah. they meet like the right person for them that early. It's and uh -huh. it's kinda it's like, like when and when people marry like mm -hmm. right out, out of high school or mm -hmm. college, it's like, ooh, it seems kinda quick you guys are getting <laughs> together. And then, but then 30 years later. I don't know how later, long this is going to last. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. You guys are actually made for each other. So it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Like actually my, um, my friends, Daniel and Jason just had like a, um, an anniversary like this past week. And I saw that, like that post on Instagram and I'm just like, that's so cool. Cause like she posted a, a picture of them two at prom, like a uh, <laughs> high school yeah. prom. Yeah. I was like, that is insane that you guys have been together for, for, for that, that long. That long. Yeah. I didn't even know you were that old. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you, have you been together longer than you are alive? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, it's crazy. Dan's one of, you know, one of my best friends and stuff. And 
I've you know I've known him in his relationships with uh, with, with Jason. It's just it's just been crazy, and like and the amount of love that I see you know um, for w with those two for each other, it's just. It's envious, man. It's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. So yeah. if you can find an ukulele just like how, Jay, how Daniel found Jason, <laughs> I, think, I think you're in for, for a lifetime of happiness. <laughs> what, um, what ukulele do you play most at home? The, the Olakayana ukulele. Oh, yeah. Like not even joking. Yes. It's that um, ends. Let's see. Because I don't... I, I want to play this, but I try to keep this in the case of, like, yeah. as much as possible because... Um, it's like a stage ukulele. Basically yeah, that for you. plus like I left out, you know, my uh, my Taylor ukulele, and that got like you know wrecked oh, and stuff. So you don't I want don't want anything. Yeah, I don't want anything to happen <laughs> yeah. to this ukulele. I, typically, I'm like a person that <laughs> leaves their instrument out. But when you said what happened to your Taylor, I'm like, I put it away in the case <laughs> yeah, every you know? single time. <laughs> so I want I would play this more if it was out more, but I try to like keep it in the case as much as uh, as much as I can and just really take it out for mostly for performances or if, you know if I'm coming to ukulele underground and stuff but um yeah like the that ukulele ola kaina like that's that's I think my most played uke and um that's a low g and the high g ukulele is the uh, the d-shaped sound hole so all of you folks who have uh, and the, the folks who uh, who do private lessons here at ukulele underground plus uh, can attest to that because I'm either holding one or the other. <laughs> I'm uh, holding either like the um, D-shaped sound hole kanile ukulele or the ola kaina. If uh, if the student has like uh, low G questions, then mm -hmm. I'll play the ola kaina ukulele. And yeah, if, yeah. Uh, if uh, with everything else, I play the high G. And folks who are watching that have taken lessons, they're like, yeah, he does. <laughs> so if somebody wanted to get something well, similar to that, it would just be like a standard tenor, standard K1, K1. tenor. Tenor, uh, matte finish. Satin, yeah, matte finish, yeah. satin finish, whatever they call it and stuff. Yeah. Like, that's that's what I would get. Something and, similar to that. But I don't know. But maybe just has that mana, you know, that spirit, that hockey. Yeah. For all of you One Piece fans out there, that, like, that just, just something about it, you know? When when we, like, get the chance to play mm. brand new instruments, we mm. kind of play it, but you kind of, like, have, like, a little bit of, you know, it's like you understand, like, oh, this is brand new, so it'll mm. probably get better as it's being played, right? And mm. as it gets more broken in but i remember that ola kaino mm. you you brought it in like as soon as you got yeah. it and it was like this is a pretty good you yeah, right out it was of the impressive box. it was so, impressive yeah that, and that i remember nice. <clears throat> like doing that because uh they gave it to us at the concert the ola kaino concert and um and i'm like oh cool like like i already have this ukulele that i had brought to oahu with me and i'm gonna like take i know it's it's like the worst problem, right? Like, oh, I got too many ukuleles to bring back on the flight with me and stuff. And um, so I just I just had it and I didn't even think twice and stuff. I'm like, I'm grateful for the ukulele and whatever. And when I get home, like, I'll deal with it, you know, that, that kind of thing. But uh, I remember after, you know, after that concert, I just kind of like sat in the car for a bit. And um, and I went to go grab some, uh, some late dinner because it finished kind of late. And um, <clears throat> while I was eating, because I didn't want to go back to the hotel yet and stuff, my kid is already sleeping. And w in the car, while I was eating my late dinner from 7-Eleven, I am like, let me check that ukulele out. And um, opened it up, and I'm like, what is this monster that's in my car right now? And I, it was, it's pretty vivid in my mind, like, uh, how I just sat there at a parking lot for like a good 30, 45 minutes playing that ukulele. Yeah. It, was, it was crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's like a telling sign of mm -hmm. like a uh, instrument that you just you know you can't put down almost yeah. like you just want to keep playing. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those. So and and ever since you know never never put it down. Love the low G on it. Um, really really resonates uh, because it's a great sounding uke. So the low G brings out even more you know out of that um, out of that wood or just out of that ukulele in general. It's good. It's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so Jim kind of yeah. he mentioned that he noticed that there's no fretboard markers on that uke. Yeah, and he was asked he asked if you have any comments on their usefulness. I personally like them on the side, not so fussed on the. Fretboard. Yeah, um, well, let's go back to the uh, inspiration, Jake Shimabukuro. Like if you check out his ukulele, there's no like um, there's there's no fret markers on the fretboard. It's just like the JS or whatever signature that he oh, has here yeah, on the signature. on the twelfth fret. I mean, if if the headstock and, and this pops up, uh, if this half of the ukulele is gonna be like inspired by Jake, 
that's exactly what I went with. Like no, you know, um, no fret markers, but I do have fret markers on the side, if you guys can see. Yeah, you can see that. There it is. Mm -hmm. So there are fret markers to the side, which is basically just for me, you know what I mean? Like I don't need Hugh Jangus fret markers on top of the ukulele, like I can see them pretty clear from uh, from from the side, and that's what they're, that's what they're there for. But uh, fret markers for this ukulele that we use here on ukulele underground is necessary because you know I'm trying to teach for this thing so I want you guys to see the uh, the, the fret markers so that you know exactly where to uh, place your fingers if um, you know if if I'm explaining something or if I'm teaching something and stuff uh, someone like Matt Dahlberg takes us a step further and actually puts the numbers like on the mm -hmm. on the fret which is really cool that's a really cool idea yeah. but yeah for myself I just like to put the uh, you know like the um, the position markers on the side if it's a custom made ukulele it keeps it clean too because a lot of like classical guitars they're just like you know they're, mm -hmm. they're blank in the front it keeps it nice and clean with with the um it looks good. As a you know, as as like a, a really dark ebony uh, fretboard, it's just nice and clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm kind of laughing because uh, I, I was lucky enough that uh, you gave me mm -hmm. your old classical guitar. Yeah, yeah. And do you remember you made <laughs> fret markers on it <laughs> for a share? That's right. Uh, <laughs> I um, that was the guitar that I had in college. Uh -huh. That's why. Yeah? And uh, so all like the old like ukulele oversoul videos, you know, like from the balcony of my um, yeah. of my apartment and stuff. I gave that ukulele to Kahai, and uh, <laughs> and that ukulele um, or guitar. Oh, that, yeah, guitar. I gave that guitar to Kahai, and um, and I don't know. I, I'm. I, I ballooned up because when in college just ate, ate all the chocolate in the world and Pocky, like for old time fans, they know this. Uh -huh. And I was also a fan of Ferro Rocher. And, um, and you know, at the top of Ferro Rocher's is like that, that little sticker at the top. Uh -huh. So I just took those like sort of stickers <laughs> and decorated the, uh, the, the guitar with it. And that was like my fret markers. It was uh -huh. like little Ferro Rocher stickers. <laughs> <laughs> my, um, I, I showed it to my dad uh -huh. and he's like, <laughs> I don't know about these stickers. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> that for everybody, I guess, you know. But um, it was fun. I mean, it was just, it it was a cheap guitar that, you know, that, that I got. No, it was not that bad. It was a Yamaha, right? You can, like, uh, plug in and stuff. That yeah, one. I think so. Yeah. yeah. It was a pretty nice guitar. I used it, you know, for gigs and stuff and, and whatever. Did I give it to you with that strap or no strap? No, I, you didn't give it uh, to me. Do you remember the strap that was with it? Uh, I don't think, <laughs> Cause, I, like, I think he just handed me the guitar. Oh, and there wasn't any, like, you know, strap peg on the, um, on, on the side or on the neck and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I just took a bunch of straws <laughs> and I tied them together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and I, I tied, remember that. Do you remember that? Yeah. I, I tied it to, like, to the hole of the other side of the strap and then, like, wrap the straw or, like, it's multiple, so make five, six straws that, like, that, that are, that are tied together that, that went around it. So, guys, I, I wasn't always playing fancy schmancy instruments, <laughs> you know, like, uh, for most of my career, I was playing a $300, like, uh, applause ukulele that I just, you know, I abused. And, um, and that's why, I, that's why I bought it, because I was uh, starting a gig. And I think the um, the uh, the shell back that, that it had, I'm like, okay, well, I'm not too worried about getting you know uh, getting this uh, dented or whatever or, or beaten up and stuff because if if I had to, worst comes to worst, I have to buy a new one. It's like three hundred dollars, you know. But now I keep this in the case because I do not possess enough money to buy another <laughs> one of these. So you know, it's um, it, yeah, it, it really like brings takes me back. It's it's nice, and I kind of miss you know having. Like instruments like that, and they were like, you know, the the old reliables, I would call them. Yeah, <laughs> I think, yeah, like everybody, you know, <laughs> you, you do you do whatever you want, and we were even talking to you know Kaimana from Kanila and stuff, mm. and I, like I was saying, like I don't know, I just think like people should own like a beater instrument yeah. or like an instrument that they're not really worried about taking it mm -hmm. anywhere, and it's just about having fun with it, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and I think that, like, I don't know, it just makes you, because when you're worried about the if the instrument is going to be damaged, it's like you can't fully enjoy it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's fine if you get an instrument like that. But, yeah, yeah, it's also fun to just have an instrument that you almost was like, oh, whatever, it's $100, $200, whatever. Do you have a, do you have a beach guitar or beach ukulele, Kai? 
uh, is it bad to say that my islander is like probably my no, beach? No, that's that's what they're there for, man. Yeah. It's not like you're bringing a kanilea to the beach or and, anything like. like <laughs> and it it the bridge like yeah. fell off, <laughs> and so my dad. Use like wood glue. I probably should have asked them to just fix it, <laughs> but my dad just used wood glue, and we well, just it, put it, it is on. your beater you can. You did exactly what Uncle Joe would tell you to do, which is <laughs> bust them up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Every ukulele I get from Uncle Joe, he's like, bust them up. And when I do bust it up, I, I like walk back in shame, like I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Can you fix like, this, please? <laughs> it's like uh, you're like the kid from the Sandlot who yeah. like used the baseball <laughs> that was signed, right? They're like you use that baseball? <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. uh, Andre asked, there are ukuleles with five or six strings, yeah. uh, like Taimanis. Mm -hmm. What is the best way to tune the lower strings? And then later on, uh, uh, JT asked, what is the best way to tune an eight string? I've been looking it up, but it goes back and forth on the tuning. Um, that is, that is dealer's choice, honestly. Like, um, with, with Taimane, you mentioned Taimane. I, you know, if you were to ask me this question before, like prior to talking to Taimani about her string setup, I'd be like, yeah, well, low G and high G, because that's what makes sense, you know, mm -hmm. like with a, with a five string setup, uh, get a low G, get a high G, so you get best of both worlds or whatever, you know, if you're into that. Um, but Taimani has like two low Gs uh -huh. and she digs it and I dig it, you know, like. Well, I, I, I dig her playing it. Yeah, so I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't think I would be able to play it. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. If you really know how to use it. I mean, yeah. that's that's her setup. And, you know, so it's it's dealer's choice because if you were to, uh, you know, if, like, like I said, if you were to ask me what, you know, what the optimal setup is, I would say high G, low G, but it's up to you, you know? Um, if you want to go high G, low G, all good. If you want to go low G, low G, all good. If you want to go high G, and even higher G, I've, I think I've seen that before because I've seen high Cs. Yeah. So I, well, you can know. you can you explain just like uh, more than four string ukuleles okay, yeah. just in general first? So yeah. That people so who don't uh, five string ukuleles, six string ukuleles, all the way up to uh, eight. You know, eight strings. Uh, what it is? It's it's still a new ukulele, whereas you're you know you're playing the same chord shapes and stuff like that. The, none of that stuff changes if you're playing up to eight strings. Um, but some of the strings are doubled. That's really all it is. So the nut and saddle are compensated so that you can fit two, um, and I guess the uh, the headstock and, and the bridge. It's the whole, I guess, just the whole you can general is modified so that you can have an extra string in there. Um, most of the time, five string ukuleles are either double the G string or double the C string. So in this case, Taimani Garner, who's an amazing ukulele player, her setup for her five string ukulele is uh, two slots for the um, for the, the G string, and she has two low Gs, both of them low Gs, you know? Um, with, uh, with most common setups for, for that, it's either, uh, you know, with, with the two slots at the G, it's a high G, when, like, like this, and a low G, at, you know, uh, right next to each other. So that when you, like, for example, play an F chord, your middle finger is, uh, you know, is, is playing the top string second fret. But when you play that on a five string ukulele, um, this middle finger will be holding down two strings at the same time because they're right next to each yeah, other. Yeah, really close. Yeah, to really each close other. to each other. So when you uh, when you place your finger there, your finger can um, can cover two strings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes five string ukuleles can be a you know on, on the C. It just depends where double the maker C. puts it. Double C, yeah. double G. Um, can be double A as well. You know, I've seen that. Um, so it, it can be like a high C or a regular C. I don't think I've seen a an octave lower C than, than this middle C here. Uh, there's a there's an E, which I've normally just see double E's, you know, double like regular E's in the there. same. Yeah. Not not octave. And yeah. then A's, uh, A and low A. That's that's what I would normally see. So if you have a five string ukulele, it could be you know an extra of any one. If you have a six string ukulele, it could be an extra of any two. Seven string, three, eight string. It's just double all the you know all the uh, all the ukulele strings. Just like a uh, if you've ever seen like a twelve string guitar, it's the same thing. They're I guess just doubling up yeah, all the strings. It has yeah. this kind of like um, chorus effect. That, yeah. You know they would they would call it. So it just sounds a lot more. Um, uh, it sounds like the like two ukuleles playing because really you're you're playing enough strings for two different ukuleles. They're just coming out of one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and Devin said, I find the eight string a little harder to do uh, real finger picking. Mm -hmm. I use it mostly for chord strumming. 
In Canada, that's yeah, in that's that's yeah. in general what you would use it for. Filming. Like, I'm not saying or you can't. Picking. Yeah, you can't pick because Taimani Garner definitely, you know, obviously, like she, you know, she does a lot of really cool finger picking, and she can do it with the double strings. So, but you know, um, their intention, I think, is just so that when you strum, it just comes off a lot more full because you have more strings on it. But you know, I mean, even in the past and stuff, uh, people who've used twelve string guitars, like like the Eagles for um, for Hotel California, like you you can only really get that tone from like a twelve string guitar, like that intro, that first guitar, like acoustic guitar that you hear in the song Hotel California is done on a twelve string guitar. So if I, for example, wanted to do a um, true to the original like cover of Hotel California. I would be doing the uh, finger picking in the intro on an A-string ukulele just to kind of have that scene effect. Yeah, but mm -hmm. yes, you can you can finger pick on it, you know. But it's it is harder because you're you're trying to you're hitting double strings as opposed to just hitting one string. But it is possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Andre said uh, thanks for the answer yeah. slash tips uh, mm -hmm. for ukulele with more than four strings. Maybe a safety idea for concerts in case a string breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Swing. I know, people are taking swings at me lately. That's, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, like, if uh, a string breaks though mm -hmm. on, you know, double course uh, instruments yeah. like that, I wonder if like, doesn't, it might have a higher chance of like all the strings going out of tune, right? Because they have a higher tension. So, mm. so it might, uh, like if, you, like you could probably get through the song, but yeah. then also after it, you. I probably would have to tune, tune all the strings mm -hmm. yeah, too, so yeah. that just, might be a problem. Other than that, just make sure it's you know it's tuned back. Like I think the initial <laughs> snap of the string might like detune it a little bit, but I think once you tune it back up, it should be okay. So it's just... if you're talking about like during the song that you're playing with, like the, uh, <laughs> the string breaks, then yeah, maybe you know, use your ear, if... fix it like during the during the song, and you're all good, right? Everyone. Yeah. does that right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. if you're if you're gonna like perform with uh, uh, a ukulele with more than four strings yes it's like just make sure that the strings <laughs> are you know pretty safe they're not they probably won't break like just try and keep it like that before <laughs> yeah. you perform yeah when when i was in high school i was in a band with my cousins yeah. and my cousin cody he had a six string ukulele mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but he didn't like it so he he just strung it with four strings four. and yeah. played it like <laughs> yeah. that yeah. i remember that like he was so excited to get it get the six string ukulele and yeah. then he played it and then he didn't like it <laughs> but it was so expensive like at the time we we're just yeah, high schoolers just it. so ah, yeah he can. just like he just took out the double mm -hmm, strings mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. he just played it like a regular ukulele yeah kaniho also he has an eight string ukulele that i um He's like, can you just, you know, like, uh, re like, change the strings for me, but just string it up with four. Four. So, yeah. That's yeah. What I, did. Mm -hmm. I, I strung my, uh, my uncle's, uh, twelve string guitar, mm -hmm. like when I was still pretty new to guitar, and I think the E string broke or oh, yeah. the E or B, right? And it, it's because like it was an old string of pack, mm -hmm. and I was like so defeated by that. <laughs> Like, and I remember like all the other strings going out of tune and I think I retuned it once, but then I gave it back to my uncle and I was like, uh, I don't want to, don't buy another set of strings. I don't want to restring this whole thing over again. It's like, so much work. Uh, was just like, here, please just take it back. Yeah. That like, uh, the concert where I broke the string wasn't actually the only string I broke that week. Like, um, we were just talking about the, the Taylor ukulele. The, the one that I the one that I broke it's I mean there's like a hole right here that like something landed on but that a string broke on that as well and um but that was like the original strings like when I bought it from you know uh, from our friend it was the same set of strings that was on there so I actually just came back from seeing Mike at the at the music store and about some like normal tension pro art is to uh, to put on that it's gonna be good yeah, so if mm -hmm. it was the strings that like mm -hmm. you originally had on that uke, yeah, that's like a couple years old, right? Yeah, they're thin too. I think they're like worths and stuff, you know. So, uh, yeah, not 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 a fan. I mean, some people like them and stuff, but I like them a little bit more thick because <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I do break them, as we've now found out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but if yeah, you bend, you, if you bend your strings enough, is yeah, like higher I, chance of breaking. I was just telling, you know, just telling these guys that like. 
I, I got some some cool praises from Matt. Like Matt Dahlberg just saw that video. He was like, oh. man, that's a cool performance. I was like, thank you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, lots. You know, I'm. Um, I, I read the comments on that as well. So and that's that's cool that people. You know, they're like, oh, <laughs> that's it's really cool that you did that instead do, of like, oh my god, do. look, see, you endorse those strings now they broke. It's like, well. If you're like handling them like how I do and not changing them like every other month like how you should be, then yeah, they'll break, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I've seen you uh, break a string uh -huh. by restringing your uke and just <laughs> yanking on it, right? To break it in. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, well, well, that was the thing, right? That you were you were a little bit nervous yeah. changing your strings beforehand because you didn't want them to go out of tune. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I, that's why I didn't change them. Yeah, um, the, so, <laughs> walking the line between <laughs> <laughs> the most embarrassing that I uh, the string that I broke was actually at Koloha. Like I was at uh, I was at Koloha, and uh, and Papa Koloha, he was uh, you know he was there and he was like kind of giving us a factory tour and mm -hmm. stuff. And then uh, one of our friends was like, oh, so you know, Aldrin, show him like a uh, show him a song that you know, like that, that you wrote or whatever. So I started playing schizophrenic snowflakes. Oh right? yeah. yeah. And were you there? No, with, with I wasn't. That time? So uh, I started playing it, and it was like I don't know if it was a pineapple or something, but it was like one of their special edition, like you know, koalohas at the, at uh -huh, the time uh -huh. that was there. And I'm playing, I'm playing schizophrenic snowflakes, and um, and it's like Papa Koloha's ukulele, and I just. <laughs> Like I, I didn't even make it halfway through the song, oh, and like and I broke it. I felt so bad. And he's like, no, 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 no. it's yeah, cool. Yeah. Like that means you know, like you really like you really played it, didn't hold back, and I like that or whatever. Uh -huh. So that was kind of encouraging to me, you know. Where he's like, no, 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 I like that you did that or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. still, I'm like, I'm sorry. Like now you gotta like change this. You gotta pay for the strings <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. Now like I'm sorry. I'm just like some kid, cause you know. To him, just like some kid, right? Like, yeah, at, yeah. and at that time, I was just some kid. Like, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. that just came, started playing the ukulele, and you broke his string, you know? Now, like, you gotta change it, you gotta pay for a whole new set and stuff, and it felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> He got. He has to pay for a whole new set when he like owns the ukulele. Back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. But in all this, he makes his own strings. Yeah. But he, which maybe he did at that time, you know? Because I know I think uh, Kolo and Worths had like a had a working relationship for a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So so they were well, well they yeah. weren't making the strings, but they yeah, yeah. they definitely yeah. they were branded working like Kolo with, branded yeah. Worth strings. Cool. And I think it was that. I think that was a turning point for me where I'm like ah not Worth strings. And it, it was it was that experience yeah. that made me go, oh, it's it's a little too thick. Because they are thin, you know, yeah. like worth strings, mm -hmm. especially those clear worths and stuff. They're pretty thin. I you know, and I don't want to say anything bad because people are like, oh, I was gonna pick up some worths, but now I'm not gonna pick up. You know, we don't play the same. Like I, I'm yeah. super heavy. And I'm not saying like I'm better or whatever. Like I'm very heavy, like on uh, on on my you know on my strings and stuff. So uh that is, is i think is a difference between you know m myself and, and a bunch of other people I, I know a lot of people who are who are heavy as well like andrew molina you know super yeah. heavy on this and that's why his, his is really yes nice. super tight so i can't even play that you uh -huh. know but i just like thicker strings that you know that that will be able to handle like some abuse because yeah, yeah. i do abuse the strings as you guys have now seen because most people just kind of see us from these ukulele on the ground play alongs and stuff and whatever and a little friday live jam but then when you know when when they see like a real concert or us like at oasis or us on tour and stuff they're like he's like really going crazy on that thing you know, he's, <laughs> he's gonna break that and and i did lo and behold yeah. <laughs> It's funny because Koloha, the Koloha guys started yeah. off as a plastics company, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. Like, it was like they made those like like spam molds and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like spam maker molds. or like acrylic. Yeah. Kinda, yeah, yeah. The the molds for making spam musubis, <laughs> like and other and other yeah, house other stuff, yeah. homeware. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it it like makes sense that like you know it's like you you said like oh you you play heavier so it's like you're mm -hmm. kind of not sure about the war strings. Yeah. But even like ukuleles, right? Like people have, have brought you their like made ukulele. Yeah. And they're like, oh, can you check it out? And you feel it and you're like, oh, the frets are a little bit sharp. Mm -hmm. And that's probably where other people like, you know, casual players will be like, I can play this. It doesn't seem like mm -hmm. that sharp. It doesn't mm -hmm. seem that bad to me. Mm -hmm. Or they but wouldn't they notice would. it immediately. But mm -hmm. for you, it's important, right? Oh, it's like, like it's immediate. It's the, the things that I notice right off the bat um, are... Like if, if the frets are dressed properly, mm -hmm. you know, 
Um, if the, you know, if it's set up properly, that means the height of the strings and all that good stuff, that's what I'll definitely notice because a lot of people who are making ukuleles for the first time, um, it tend to go like super high or super mm -hmm. low, you know, like they getting that, like that perfect setup takes a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. um, the, uh, yeah, definitely the, the dressing on the, uh, the, the, on the frets. I also notice like intonation. That's another thing that like, it's going to take a few, you know, a few ukuleles before you nail that thing down. Um, also buzzing. Yeah, yeah. That's like, those are things that I, I look for. So if, you know, the little mini advice, if you guys are looking for, uh, ukuleles, those are, uh, I'll, I'll dream Guerrero. That's, yeah. a, that's the, or, what I look at first. Or, Cause like we recommend, uh, if you can go into yeah. like a store and, yeah, and, and try take, it out, try, uh, try mm. out ukuleles. What, what would you do? Like, say you, you took mm. out an ukulele off the wall. Like what do you immediately do? Oh. Immediately, I, I take I take the ukulele. I go like this, and uh -huh. then I play it. Play it to your yeah, to facing yourself. To you yeah. A lot of people go like this, and they start to play and stuff. Sounds super different, you know. Then if you go like this, you want to get to know the ukulele and what it the actually sound. sounds like. What's the sound is coming out, you know, to to your audience or whatever. What sounds is coming out of the sound hole, you know. Uh -huh. So like this, but and then I'll, I'll I'll start to hold it, and then once I hold it, I go like this. Like I take my, you know, I take my thumb and my pointer finger and I run my fingers right at the top like this. Because if you, my fingers run through the top and it's smooth, that means it's good. It's yeah? just like along the sides of the yeah. neck. Because if the, um, if the fret wires are not dressed properly, then some of them stick out a little bit and you can feel the, uh, like the, the fret wires on the side. Mm -hmm. And um, as, as a player who jumps up and down the fretboard, I'm going to slice my fingers <laughs> if, uh, you know, if, if it's sticking out even just a little bit. Uh -huh. So that, how, do you, you know, how do you fix that? There's a thing that they use to dress the frets. And if, if you're a luthier, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and then, you know, like I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll feel it out. And then I'll do a simple C scale. Usually here, that's like oh, where I'll get a buzz. Oh, the okay. most like the most common buzz C string second fret. Test that fret. Really like really play it. Make it you know make it buzz because there's a there's a uh, a threshold where, where almost every ukulele will buzz. Uh -huh. But then figure out where that threshold is for you. This one like. It's, it's fine. There's a little bit, you know, like if I if really dig like dig in and stuff. Uh -huh. So every ukulele has that, you know. So it's up to you to figure out if if that's the right threshold, you know, on on the C uh, for you. And sometimes the E, the G, E string third fret. Like, see if I really dig in, <laughs> you'll you'll hear it. Um, I think that's you know for the most part that's it. And so I'll I'll you know I'll do a simple C major scale. Testing every single one of those frets because that scale has a sec C string second fret, has the E string third fret in it. Mm -hmm. So if those thing, uh, those two strings buzz, or if those two frets buzz, um, and if it's like lower than the threshold that I'm like I'm hoping for or yeah. that I want, then I, I put it back. You know, immediately, immediately. Yeah, it's like, like it's just not gonna work. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, cause that's you know you don't want to be playing your ukulele and then like. It's just, it's buzzing. It's, you know, like you don't want that sound yeah, to be yeah. part of what you, you know, because it's not yeah. you. It's like, that's, that's the instrument at that uh -huh. point, you know? Um, and then I would, uh, you know, I would kind of pl play some inversion stuff like C, C, C. Because immediately you can kind of hear if this C and this C and this C sounds you know, cohesive. If, if it yeah. sounds the same, if it has good intonation, in, in and then if I hear something funny, I'll go, which is to test the intonation. So fret zero, um, oh, sorry, the, the 12th fret, uh, when, you, when you harmonic, uh, when you do harmonics on the 12th fret, should be the same note. But if it goes like this, yeah, if it sounds off, if it sounds off, then, you know, then that means it's uh, it goes sharp as it you know as you go up the fretboards. So that's not something that you want because that's also not your fault. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I want to eliminate stuff as much as possible that that like, could possibly you know be be the ukulele, and then I'll just move on to the next one. And then after if uh, if all if all of those click, I'll just just play you know just play something. I'll, and literally something by the Beatles. Like I'll play. <laughs> and I'm not, it's not even a joke. <laughs> like I that's do your go-to. That is my go-to because I go. 
I'm like I'm testing that like that that bend right off the bat. Uh, if it feels yeah. good, I'm, I can hear the tone. I can hear some like some good rolls. It's a nice slow tune that you know that I can uh, that I can hear. And then I'll play something kind of like you know kind of fast. If if I'm if it gets past that, and that's when I'll pick the the ukulele. Uh -huh. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, because I mean everything else is aesthetic. Right, mm -hmm. like those are the important things to really check. I know there's like all these like how to whatever pick an ukulele. Like everyone makes those videos, but that's really for me the ones that you know that that matter. The yeah. the, the factors that matter when when I'm picking out an ukulele. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, before all of this, yeah. you tune it. Try yeah, to of tune course. It first, and then, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If the tuning pegs are not right, good, right, 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 right. Yeah. I thought that goes without yeah, saying. Yeah, 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 so yeah, that yeah, goes yeah. Yeah, without saying. I think it's good that you said too, mm -hmm. like it's your threshold yes right? because there are like even things like intonation which like if you find a ukulele ah. that doesn't have great intonation mm -hmm. maybe you can ask the shop to help you out with fixing that but even that it's like how like if you're not really planning to play like inversions or mm -hmm. play super high up the fret then it's like ah, i don't really need mm -hmm. like my 14th fret to be in tune right then it's like ah yeah it's 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 okay, but mm -hmm. I can get by with it not being perfectly in tune yeah. on every fret. So, and yeah. I also mentioned, you know, doing different inversions and stuff, and that's also to kind of feel out the uh, the action from this side of the ukulele to this side of the ukulele. Like that should yeah. be um, straight up across the board. I, I, I like it to be pretty consistent. Nowadays, I'm leaning towards a higher action. I mean, not super duper high or anything, but just a smidge high because I've been doing my own saddles lately. So mm -hmm. I, I, I set up the saddle a little bit higher to get a little bit more um, attack and, um, and response from, from the strings. Yeah. yeah. Usually a higher, um, a higher saddle equals more volume. Too, yeah. So. yeah. So that's, that's the setup that I've, I've changed for myself a little bit. So when I let someone else play, like I, I had um, Tito Boy play, you know, play my ukulele mm -hmm. uh, a couple weeks back and stuff. And yeah, it's it's one of those things like it's kind of high, yeah. I'm <laughs> like, yeah, it's a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and then that's I think that's why like we can tell you what makes a good ukulele, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, it's up to you, right? Yes. And it really yeah. is like if you it's just like oh, I just like this ukulele, like mm -hmm. I just want to keep playing it, then you should probably get it. You know, you mm -hmm. should probably try it because like even if it's not it's not great mm -hmm. technically, if it makes you want to play it, then that's a good ukulele. That's yeah. It. Because there, there are some ukuleles, I'll, I'll pick it up and I'll do this. And right off the bat, I'm like, oh yeah, this is, this is cool. <laughs> you know, like it just doesn't, give it right back. It doesn't like, pass step Exactly. One. And it's just, you know, if it sounds like, you know, I'm, I'm playing like a, a can of Campbell's soup, you know, then, then yeah, <laughs> no, I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to give it back. But, you know, I mean, of course you're going to, you're going to go through it a little bit more where like you're going to spend a little bit more yeah. time with the instruments. See, you know, if you're really digging the tone, that's when you get into all those things. But as far as like the essentials and what to check for, I think that's it. Yeah. You know, I think you, you've probably experienced this too, right? Like where it's, mm -hmm. you're playing your uke or you're playing your instrument and you swap with somebody else mm -hmm. and you've heard them play their instrument. And when you pick it up, it's just like, this doesn't feel right or i can't really get it to sound yeah. it's just like how did you play it to make it sound that good like i just it's totally different so mm -hmm. it really is like each instrument is different and mm -hmm. then the way you play it like how you you yeah. know use the instrument is going to be different so everybody right. has their own needs and wants so it, it's totally dependent on you on the player also yeah, yeah. cuz like of the day. we we mentioned andrew molina you know i've met up with him i've like i've played his his ukulele I couldn't make it how he make how you know I couldn't make it sound like how he does. Yeah. That's definitely yeah. his setup and stuff. Kale also, you know, played his ukulele. I can play his uke, but it's not gonna sound like when Kale plays it. You know, yeah. Jake and, and all and all these great ukulele players. I played their ukes, and it's just I can make it sound decent, you yeah. know, but and just never, never gonna sound like how Kale plays Kale's uke. It, it like, and it doesn't mean that those ukes are bad, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. they're great ukes. Mm -hmm. It's just like oh, it's just. It doesn't match up to how I play, so yeah. that's it. Yeah. And yeah. then also, it's probably like you play Kalei's uke and you still sound like you. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's true. So it's that's true. the thing is that <laughs> like, maybe that's the realization that, that most people have to make. I, is I'm going to play Mach, Mach 4 on it. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like, but it still sounds like Aldrin yeah. Guerrero no matter what. Yeah. I think that that's where it, like, it comes back to that soulmates thing, right? It really is like you when you meet your soulmate, it's like, oh, it's not 
hard to be in this relationship. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's easy to play this <laughs> instrument. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, because I've had Rio from Japan like play my ukulele and he played like uh, Senor Victor for me and I'm Is like it... that sounds better than when I play. Well, well that's <laughs> why but then it, it sounds like Rio. But then he, he still sounds like himself. Rio, yeah. Rio's just better than me period. Yeah. Rio's gonna <laughs> Rio's gonna steal your ukulele. <laughs> He's in Rio is amazing. Whoa whoa whoa, whoa. Uh, <laughs> let's hold it up like don't, don't, you know <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's because he's just better than you period <laughs> yeah both rios <laughs> both yeah i guess i'm both After, rios rios and rio <laughs> rio and rio afterwards with your youth right like it you, yeah. you open up the cases like don't don't believe them <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 don't don't believe the lies yeah <laughs> those those two man I, um rio has actually been putting uh putting out some pretty cool experimental stuff with like uh, a bunch of different instruments, um, like combinations. He's been jamming with a bunch of people and stuff. I oh, follow him on, on Facebook still. You yes. know, wait, which one? Uh, Rio R I O. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, of course, Rio uh, Natoyama. Is that, is that his last name? Is uh, is the other Rio? Yeah, the other Rio. Yeah, R Y O. And he's, I'm sure he's still, you know, kicking butt because uh, mm -hmm. he was he was always <laughs> really good. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'll, I'll show him like something that he hasn't seen before, and he'll master it like in two seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like what? How do you just do that? It took me like months to figure that out. Yeah, it's funny. Hawaii Music Supply <laughs> is in our chat, and they said oh, yeah? Rio is amazing. Yeah, yeah. no, Rio is is, is yeah. awesome, man. And yeah. he's, he's he's cool. He's got this like <laughs> got this really like like polished look to him now. Like the like the the look. He looks like you know like like a performer. Remember, like how Cat Seiji like would would go up and kind of present himself. Uh -huh. He's like got that you know got the look and stuff. Rio has found his look. Yeah. You know, it's uh -huh. awesome. You know, little boy <laughs> grew up. Little boy grew up. He doesn't have the hat anymore and stuff. He's letting a... his hair go. It looks super Asian. Love it. You know, it's it's the saying, real <laughs> identifies real, right? <laughs> <laughs> real rec recognize Zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. you recognize real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, so those two are... Uh, we were just talking about... Um, so speaking of people who does like uh, does some pretty cool things with the ukulele, uh, we were just talking before the 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 con uh, not concert but the, uh, the the podcast started. We we're talking about Boy with Uke. If you guys if you guys haven't checked out Boy with Uke yet, what are you guys waiting for? Boy with Uke is is the coolest thing happening right now. Like yeah. I, I think. Well, think disclaimer. Um, oh, some yeah. swears, some explicit <laughs> lyrics. You know, he is he is a rapper, <laughs> but I think one of the coolest things like happening currently on the modern ukulele world as far as performing as far as like you know just being cool with the ukulele like <laughs> using it to express yeah. yourself yes. it gets the, our like certified fresh yes. <laughs> certified fresh ukulele on the ground approves a boy with uke so so awesome he's you know he's uh he he's just a little he's just a boy with uke <laughs> he's, he's great um it's it's really like you know taking today's music and mixing the ukulele with today's music. A lot of you know, a lot of us ukulele players nowadays, we we tend to play either like a lot of uh, a lot of older stuff or our own you know our own things. But Boy Would Uke is you you know is using it to kind of express himself lyrically and music wise. It's in line with today's um, pop music. Mm -hmm. It's really 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 cool. So if you know if you're a young person and uh, and and you want to see somebody you know somebody young do some amazing um music with uh with 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 ukulele and some lyrics check that out i think he has some does some clean songs and stuff but a lot of his songs have explicit lyrics to it you know yeah good good stuff i, I actually aaron showed me boy with you or yeah I, I, well well because like i was thinking about like this because because ukulele mm -hmm. underground has always been like our mission has been to help grow the next generation yes. of ukulele yes. players so we're always kind of like looking out for what is going to happen next with mm, the mm. ukulele and what i had envisioned was probably like an electric ukulele being the front and center mm. like the the lead singer of like some kind of rock band yeah would take electric ukulele yeah. and like make it mainstream yeah and like that never happened <laughs> <laughs> i mean people have used it for songs Missed the and mark stuff, on that but it's, yeah but yeah. i i thought because like like we grew up with like like the Foo Fighters were like the coolest thing yeah. when we were growing up. And so like mm. I had imagined that like the next generation, whatever the equivalent of Foo Fighters was, <laughs> yeah. it, it would be like that. Incorporate a uke in it. And if if they use the ukulele yeah. as the front and center for that, mm. then like that might be the resurgence that mm. we needed to yeah. like make the wave go on to the next, yeah. you know. But 
this seems sort of that same ideal, yeah. but in a different, in like the actual context of well, music today. <laughs> because that's part of his identity. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. not like just you kind of like how Train used ukulele for that, for that one Hey Soul Sister song. It yeah. was just like, it was just for that song. And it was very, you know, um, like it became kind of novelty, you know? Yeah. Or yeah. like, oh, that that's that ukulele song and stuff. But if you hear like any other Train song, Drops of Jupiter, whatever, you know, like it has no ukulele in it at all. Whereas like Boy With Uke, that's part of his identity. Yeah. And, like, and, and that music has all those Uke tracks on it. Yeah. Well, we were just talking about Ian and James recently yeah. too. Mm-hmm. And so like, uh, I thought that that's what was going to happen too because mm-hmm. like Train sort of launched yeah. Aiden James' career. Yeah. And then he was doing cool, like, looping stuff. Like, he evolved to Mm. the point where it was, like, he was making modern music Mm -hmm. with the ukulele. And I thought that that's where it was going to go. But um, I think, yeah, it's it's almost like Mm. that, where, like, Boy With Uke is almost like the next evolution of what Aiden James started. Yeah. So... Yeah, Matt. Matt asks, yeah. "Is Aaron the voice actually Boy with You?" Oh, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> conspiracy theory. <laughs> He's there. Are you touring right now? Because <laughs> Boy Boy with You is touring right now. Yeah. It's kind of interesting that there's so. <laughs> there's actually a few masked ukulele players in the community. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and and that's that's pretty cool too. Because like we were talking about. Um, like internally, we talk about all kinds of weird mm-hmm. stuff, and like mm-hmm. Kahai was like sort of the um, the first person to like introduce us to the idea of like anonymous celebrities. Yeah, basically, <laughs> right? And so that's Boy with You is kind of similar to that, yeah. where it's like like we live in a time where you can be anonymous and a mm-hmm. celebrity. Mm-hmm. Like that's mm-hmm. pretty. That's kind of a new. <laughs> that seems like idea. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, you get the best of both worlds right? yeah, yeah i think i think yeah. we we have um reached the end of like <laughs> what we 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 understand as like the benefits of being a celebrity right? <laughs> like a public celebrity like. well with like with instagram and tiktok and, and youtube and stuff it's it's easier to be like an anonymous celebrity now you know yeah because like, you just and it's kind of cool i dig that because it's not about you know like uh a, we were just talking about you know people like putting stuff up and doing it for clout and whatnot. Whereas like boy with Uke, it's he's he's behind the mask and he's just kind of like here's my music, you know, yeah, like yeah. unfiltered or whatever. Yeah, if it's you like, like it, yeah, you like it, you like but it. But you don't like it yeah. just for me. Yeah, you're probably. not following me because I'm like some whatever, you know. It's just like this is the music. Here's what I do with my ukulele, and it's cool because I saw clips of him like performing live. It's just like it's just him with his ukulele, and there's like you know he's playing to a track and stuff with his, with his uke and singing, and everyone's singing along. It looks like a good time. I would love to go to a boy with uke concert. <laughs> you know, yeah. If anyone has any connections, I would love to meet boy with uke so yeah what? or maybe it's kahai oh maybe that's why we're <laughs> shilling so hard <laughs> i am we're gonna expand the kfc <laughs> i am a, a boy with a uke yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 boy with you good stuff um it's 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 the coolest thing happening in ukulele right now i think, <laughs> I think you know i like who has more followers than that we're guy so cool you know, like, that we as far know as like what's, what's yeah. the pulse of the <laughs> If this podcast is anything, it's knowing what cool is, right, yeah. Kahai? Yeah. 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 It's not, yeah. It's, we, we totally don't talk about only old things. <laughs> <laughs> we, we totally didn't talk about, like, the beginning of the podcast, how your uke is inspired by pure heart and perfect. <laughs> Cal- yeah. And like, we didn't just the realize, audience is like, who? <laughs> yeah. We didn't just re- release our newsletter talking only about pure heart and, <laughs> and Cal- <laughs> creative voice. <Cal-Cretive> <laughs> <laughs> yeah so look look to us to to telling you what cool is uh, yeah. no but yeah like i, I think it's, it's cool because like who's you know who's got more i mean i guess other like youtube celebrities or whatever you know they, they call them maybe some people might have more but i think this this kid kid with you <laughs> kid with you is uh is, is putting ukulele and the music and the lyrics out there first Mm-hmm. Rather than you know like than than doing it for clout or whatever, it's like I'm following this because it's you know it's a it's like a whatever like good looking person like no this is yeah it's like I, don't know what a, I don't know what I don't know what he looks like, like. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah so cool 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 also not ukulele related but we were talking about ginger root check out ginger root <laughs> shout out to ginger root yeah awesome. Yeah, awesome. totally not ukulele. Totally not ukulele related, but check out the song Loretta by Ginger Root. You're welcome. 
We used to. It's, it's stuck in my head all week. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we used to do like uh, you remember uh-huh. with like when Mike used to come on, we used yeah. to do like each of us used to do a recommendation. Oh so yeah. Those, like those are this week's recommendations. Yeah. So uh, to all the people who can handle explicit lyrics, boy with uke. Or, or like is into like cool pop stuff nowadays, you know? Like it's not recommended for like I only like whatever reggae or you know, like uh, like folk music. It's not reggae or folk. It's it's definitely like modern uh, pop. But um, if you like old school music, uh, uh, funk specifically, I think you should I think you should check out Ginger Root because Ginger Root is great. I know I'm late to that Ginger Root train, but it's awesome. Check out Loretta and just. Enjoy. <laughs> no, more importantly, watch the video to Loretta. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah, don't it's just a package I, deal. Exactly. Just watch the video to Loretta. You're welcome. <laughs> That's, okay. I'm not gonna say any more than that. I'm not gonna tell you what it is or whatever. Uh, just watch the video for Loretta by Ginger Root. <laughs> it's, yeah, I think we can end on that. <laughs> it's not sponsored. Not sponsored. Not ukulele related at all. But it's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of. I'm like laughing over here because yeah. Andrew from Hawaii Music Supply yeah. said trying to stay up on the cool. <laughs> it's like, it, like we're we're like the Steve Buscemi wearing. The, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. How's it, fellow young kids? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. on the skateboard. Bad shirt. <laughs> yeah. We're cool, right? We're still. Yeah. We're still hip. We're, we're, with it we're kakui <laughs> right kai oh my gosh <laughs> aren't you kakui it's like uh <laughs> the 23 jump street <laughs> oh man. yeah we're that we're like steve Bus- buscemi coming yeah, in with, yeah. with the skateboard like how's it fellow young kids mm-hmm. <laughs> let's talk about all the cool things today <laughs> did but you hear yeah. about these tiktoks so cool <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so um anything else before we go if you guys are looking for an ukulele, uh, check out shop.ukuleleontheground.com. We have a, uh, a pretty cool curated selection of Kanilea and Islander ukuleles. Yeah. If you guys are looking for something specific, if you want to do a custom order, you can always check us out. And if not, if you're <laughs> looking for you know just ukuleles in general, the guys in the chat right now at Hawaii Music Supply does an um, awesome job at picking out the perfect ukulele just for you and their selection of different types of ukuleles amazing so make sure you check them out i think it's just was it hawaiimusicsupply.com yeah yeah check, check them out in check person out. too if you're yes, in, in person they're awesome people so if you're ever on the island of uh, of oahu check them out on the north shore uh hawaii music supply or the ukulele site or yeah they have two stores yeah. now I oh think. yeah all right on. yeah they so, have one in like Kaka and you guys might meet some cool you know like some cool ukulele celebrities because yeah. they hang out there all the time you know like like yeah. andrew and Corey and and Calais and Brittany's, you know they're just they're just always there hanging out. It's cool. Yeah, we want to hang out. <laughs> yeah, we 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 want to be cool also. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, make sure you check them out. So if you guys are looking for an ukulele, uh, those are some cool places. Shop at ukuleleontheground.com or more general, Hawaii Music Supply. Uh, what else? We have uh, a brand new lesson coming out this month. Um, with yeah, it's it's gonna be cool. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this lesson. It's it's not. I think it's just for me. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. this lesson. You haven't up, seen it yet. Yeah. If you yeah, <laughs> I I, I want to see this this uh, this next lesson. Uh, Aaron's really been cooking up some cool stuff for the uh, for the play along and the lesson itself. Uh, we got a cool little intro um, for the uh, for for the lesson. I I dig it. And there's some awesome words were said. Made me blush. You know. Um, I don't know where Aaron's gonna put that, but that's that's awesome. Uh, you guys will will know what I'm talking about later <laughs> later on next week, but yeah, and we or also in a couple days actually. Yeah, yeah, a couple days. Nice. So Monday. that um, that lesson and play along will uh, will come out. Um, uh, for all of you private lesson students, I will not be here May 16th to the 24th. So if you guys are booking your private lessons for the month, just know that those dates I haven't blacked those out. I should have blacked those out, but you know I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to message some people perhaps. <laughs> so uh, I'll see you folks next time. Have a great one. Um, check out those sites. Hello. Stick around for stick around for uh, UU Plus coaching right after this over at UU Plus. If you remember, check it out. Uh, UU Plus live coaching live. Bye.